Welcome to Freedom Cast, where your hosts, Jordan and Miranda, show you how to get just a little bit more out of life. Are you ready to leave normal behind? Wait for extraordinary opportunities. Seize common occasions and make them great. Weak men wait for opportunities. Strong men make them. And that is a quote by Orson Svet Marden. Very nice. Very nice, Miranda. Welcome in, Freedom Cast listeners. We're going to be talking about a cool word that I love called serendipity. We are continuing the series of our Volcanic Momentum, How to Gain Momentum series as we lead up into my book's launch. Uh, We are extremely, extremely excited for this episode because we love this topic. I think we love a lot of the topics we talk about. Oh, yeah. But this one's really cool. This one's about creating serendipity in your life by planting seeds and making opportunities. Uh, We are super excited to get started here. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, and I think everyone would say they want more opportunities to come up in their life. It's something that, you know, when you get the chance that this great opportunity, it feels awesome. You're like, yeah, man. But what we want to talk about today is how can you set yourself up for success to have more of those opportunities? How can you create opportunities for yourself instead of just waiting for the world to create them for you? Yeah, because I mean, I think a lot of times we're gonna get lucky. We're gonna the world is gonna create opportunities for us. You know, well, for some things we'll put no energy into it, uh, and then the world will just be super nice to us, and then we'll we'll get we'll get something really cool. Uh, we'll get a raise. We'll get a new job. We'll get, maybe we'll get offered a new job, um, or maybe you know something. One of our side hustles just goes bam, and it takes off like we never would have expected it. Uh, I think there are are so many good occasions where life can just go really well and we can be very blessed but i think on the other hand most of the time we need to be planting seeds and we need to be kind of growing towards that uh, as much as we can ourselves and that's where i think uh, we can create our own serendipity we can plant seeds we can ask early on in order to make those opportunities uh, come about and i think this out of all of the different topics you covered in this book this one i think is one that i'm the weakest in is just asking asking people even if you know the answer is going to be no even if you know that you know they don't have an opportunity for you right now but like you said planting those seeds and just putting yourself out there it really is scary when you put yourself out there but that's how you plant those seeds of opportunity in the future yeah because if we're 100 percent dependent dependent upon luck or just, you know, hoping that things are going to work out, our momentum is going to be stymied very quickly. Uh, And if we can start now planting seeds and trying to grow opportunities around us, there's so much we can accomplish. uh, And we're going to skyrocket towards our goals because of all these different things coming together. Uh, One of my favorite examples, and we do, I do talk about this in the book. Um, So again, if you want to uh, get more information about the book, you can go to www.jmring.com slash volcanic dash momentum. Uh, That way you can get a little bit more information and you can actually read this story for yourself, uh, you know, in text. And I probably, usually I'm better at writing stories than I am saying them. But this one's cool. I've told this one before. We may have even talked about it in the podcast, but my work with Archangel Inc., I do marketing work for them. I I help clients with their book launches. um, And I also do some audio work for them. But we have really good relationship, really good uh, I love, absolutely love working, uh, you know, for and with Rob and Christy over at Archangel Link. Just such a good team, such a fun time. Um, but that opportunity never would, I don't think it ever would have come up if I hadn't planted a seed. Um, pretty early on in our working relationship, uh, after I had gotten a couple book covers from them, uh, everything had been going really well. I, you know, I just sent an email over to Rob and said, hey, like, you guys are awesome. Uh, if any opportunity ever comes up, uh, that there's something that I could do for you guys. I would love to just at least entertain that possibility. Uh, at that point, Rob and I hadn't had too many, you know, conversations back and forth. I know, I remember he had sent me a free um, audiobook cover for my Action Diet book, which I thought was really cool because I was like, hey, what do I, you know, what do I need to pay you guys for this? I'd like to get the cover converted. Uh, and the next thing I know, Rob's just sending me an email with the uh, audiobook cover uh, and said, hey, man, here you go. 
I was like, whoa, that's so cool. You know, so really early on, they got me just really, I, I felt really connected and for, really loved like as a client. And I think, and I really believe that and care for that as well. So it's just a match made in heaven. It was a good fit. Um, but I just sent that email and said, hey, if you get, ever get an opportunity, I'd love to work with you guys. I can't tell you what I could do for you guys, I but I can tell you, like, I'm really good with computers and I'm a hard worker uh, and I really have a passion um, for writing and this stuff. So if we could ever get hooked up in the future uh, and something could work out, just let me know, you know. And it didn't, it wasn't super long and I didn't pour my heart out. I was just opening up an opportunity. I was planting a seed and I knew that they liked me. I knew they enjoyed working with me. Um, but maybe nothing would have ever come out of that. But, you know, lo and behold, Rob started me on some audio work. That went really well. Uh, and then they approached me two months before Miranda and I were getting ready to leave our jobs. Now, we were getting ready to leave our jobs. We didn't really know exactly what we were going to do next. We had some ideas. We had some stuff in the works. Um, but we weren't sure. About two months before we were getting ready to leave, like we had already known we were going to leave for yeah. quite a few months uh, in advance of that. Um Rob and Christy reached out to me and said, hey, you want to do some, uh, we'd like to take you on and do do some marketing stuff for us. We're expanding our offer, offerings to our clients. Um, is this something you would like to do um, for us? And then it's taken off since then. That, since then, I've absolutely enjoyed the work with them. Um, you know, and I don't, I don't want to say like that was 100% like me doing that because I think absolutely like, you know, God has a plan for us, and I really do believe like God was really working in that situation. Um, but at the same time, if we're not putting feet to our prayers, as my grandma always says, then we're not going to get too far. I think it's that's where that I mean, prayer is super important, and we need to be actually taking steps as well. And that's where I think this creating our own serendipity uh, that moment was just like, man, like th how, what good timing this was. Like, I am so glad that I planted the seed way back when instead of waiting until we were gone and saying hey guys i'm desperate like is there anything that we could make work for me you know because those things i don't like i don't like those things because those things aren't natural uh they may not be a, even a good fit right away um you know we can just see so much cool progress towards our goals uh and just cool serendipity serendipity in life if we're planting those seeds early yeah, definitely. And that's what is so cool about that story is the timing was just spot on because we the were timing was ridiculous. <laughs> we were so busy. I don't know if you could have done anything along with like our job then, you know? No. So it was very, very timely. And it all came out, you know, because you asked because you threw that out there. And when you do ask for these things, it is hard because you are putting yourself in more of a vulnerable position. They could have said, no way. You know, like you never know what they're going to say. It could have ended very poorly. So it is kind of being prepared to hear hear a no, maybe, even if, you know, you're just throwing it out there. You have to be prepared for whatever the response will be. But it's just, yeah, planting those seeds. Um, it could be something that you threw out there months ago, years ago, and you completely forgot about it. But then all of a sudden, that's just this great opportunity, um, just because you planted that seed, you know, however long ago. Yeah, and that's where that's where that one came up. I had totally forgotten that I had said that, you know, like, oh, I didn't even remember sending that, you know, of course, once it once it got going, I was like, oh, yeah, I did plant that seed, you know, and I wasn't, I didn't know this, this stuff at the time. But looking back, it's cool to analyze it and see how beneficial it was. And it's just cool to even think about what could I be doing in my life right now to be planting seeds in, in some of those things? How can I be growing in what I'm doing right now? And I think that's such a cool question uh, for all of us. How can we how can we ask and how can we really push towards our goals and, and plant some of these seeds and start? Yeah, and it's not about instant gratification. It is, you know, that delayed gratification. So even if you go and you want to ask your boss for a raise because you've taken on a lot of new responsibilities, even if you go and ask and they say, no, we can't do that right now, maybe they'll give you a raise in six months instead of waiting a full year to reevaluate your salary. So it's just it's just asking and, and throwing it out there, putting yourself out there and um, just waiting to see what happens. Yep. That one is huge right there. And I actually, I even have that example, I believe, in my book. Uh, as well um, about asking for a raise because it, that's just kind of shows exactly what we're talking about. You go and ask your boss, he's not going to give it to you right away. I mean, you can you can apply that to 
most areas of your life. You know, if, you, if you're going to wait to do something, you might have to wait. It's We talk about all the time, like if you want to quit your job, you can't do it right away. But if you plan uh, and you start planting seeds in other places and start working towards it, um, maybe that could be a very real possibility for you sometime very soon. Yeah. Can you think of any other <clears throat> good examples of how people can practically like go out and try to you know, create their own serendipity? What other ways can, you know, can we be out and about and, you know, working towards that, trying to find, where can you search out those opportunities? I think a lot of it, I mean, I have a whole nother chapter in my book about building community, but I think that can be a huge thing is meeting with people uh, and seeing how you can help them uh, and seeing what they do and just getting to know people better. I think that can be huge. Um, Just take someone out to coffee or go to lunch with someone new. Um, absolutely love um, one of our good friends, Jenny Motes, who's on the podcast, her book, 50 Coffees. Mm-hmm. I always think about that in terms of community. Like yes. that just has stuck with me ever since I've read that book because she talks about just getting to know people, going in with no sense of like, what am I going to get from this? But maybe what can I do to give back to that person? And that is just going to return to you tenfold. Uh, and I think that can be a great way, great practical way uh, of of sending some some serendipity and some good good stuff out there into the void, and just connecting with people. And you know, maybe down the line they they call you back and they say, "Hey, like I I know we met over coffee. I was wondering if you could help me out with this, or or my company needs a person to do this, or whatever it is." I think you know the more connections we have, and the more we're throwing ourselves out there, um, you know, the better off we're gonna do. Um, I think the more we can learn to just uh, do that and then go with the flow as well and then to take chances along the way, like the better off we're going to be. And it always, always, always comes down to your connections, who you know. You know, even though everything... That's like life right there. Everything is translated (laughs) over into the internet now. So many things are digital. It's still even, you know, in your, you know, your blogging and everything you do online all of it is still relationships and that's just like the the biggest thing i think you're right if you're looking to help people if you're looking to find more opportunities for yourself in the future you have to put yourself out there and build relationships because if people don't know what you do if people don't know what you're good at if you don't know what connections other people have it's just there's missed opportunity there and so it's so important to just put yourself out there and meet new people and I mean, that's been such a learning process for us. You know, we're still very much working on that. But it is. It always, 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 always comes back down to relationships. And I think that's why the Jenny's book, 50 Coffees, is so good. Because, you know, that's like the most important thing. Building those relationships with other people and putting yourself out there and meeting new faces. Yep. And I I, I think to just to elaborate on this whole topic of creating serendipity, a little bit more. I think it's important to just, in some ways, learn not to take no for an answer. And I think that is something Miranda and I are very much still working on. Uh, Doing that out in the real world can be really difficult. Um, It can be hard to put into practice. Um, And obviously, it's not something where we're going to, we're going to, we're not going to take no for an answer. We're going to like badger people or Mm -hmm. belittle people. It's not about that. It's about, it's about our mindset with it. It's about Hey, if I go to Starbucks and say, hey, can I get a free coffee today? Like, they're probably not going to say yes, but at least it gets a little bit more rejection in your life and it gets you a little bit more used to hearing that. And I lost what I was saying. Yeah, but you're never going, you know, you're not going to just get a free coffee if you don't ask, you know, like you have to ask or that the chance of that happening is zero. So. And that's a very silly example. Yeah, but because most people aren't going to do that. You're probably not going to get a free coffee, but if you... Like Miranda said, if you don't ask, the chance is 100% that you're not going to get one. But if you're, even if you want to just do it in a joking way, they might be like, yeah, I'll give you a free coffee today. I've seen you a bun- in here a bunch. Like, you're, we know you're a good customer. And then you'd be like, whoa, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, that worked. That's crazy. <laughs> and I think it all comes down to risk as well. And, and just, I think sometimes we, we put this level of risk out there that is so unrealistic. Like, if I do this thing, then this will happen. Like... Hey, if I talk to the barista at Starbucks and ask for a free coffee, like this will happen. Well, what are we expecting is going to happen? They're probably just going to say no. Like they may look at you weird or they may be like, yeah, like, you know, but like if we, 
it's just it's so cool to ask and see what opportunities are out there. Um, for my book launch Gladiator book, I was able to get Steve Scott to endorse that book. Um, Rob helped me with that because he has a connection with him. Uh, but I was still scared to ask. And there's a hummingbird outside our window. That's really cool. Oh, That's really pretty, actually. It's so pretty. <laughs> He's gone. That was really cool. I don't know if we're going to keep that in the podcast or not. But yeah, Rob helped me with that connection with Steve Scott. Uh, but it still was like a reach. I'm like, I don't even know if I want to ask this because I don't want him to say no. Like, Steve Scott's like really big in the self-publishing industry. I don't want to like, I don't want to annoy him. I don't want to like, I think things like that, we don't want to go beyond our reach. We don't want to like, we don't want to hear that rejection. But then what's the worst that can happen? Like, what's what would be wrong with that rejection? And then you got to think about what's the best that can happen. I think that's just the what is the best that can happen is such a better way of thinking than what's the worst that can happen. But our pro- our proclivity as humans, I think, is to always be risk averse and to be thinking like, well, what's the absolute worst ca- that can happen? I absolutely want to avoid that. But there's so much out there in life that we can – there's so many opportunities that we can create and then we can make for ourselves by just asking. And we never have to be rude about it. We don't have to be like obnoxious. You know, I think some people think like, oh, I don't want to ask that because that's obnoxious. But no, we don't have to be that way. Um, just ask and put yourself out there and see what happens. Yeah, and I think it's been cool with you, you know, working from home and everything. I think you've been kind of forced into that more. For me, you know, still working a traditional job. Yeah, it's, absolutely. I, it's kind of harder to be like, well, what opportunities? Because, you know, I don't necessarily want to, you know, move up on the ladder but if I did, like, I could ask, like, what, you know, what does it take to become, you know, like the next level? What what would I have to do? Or, you know, just that putting yourself out there. But it's still scary. I mean, especially, you know, in a traditional job, that's your your income, you know, that's it. So you want to you don't want to screw things up there. So I think it's definitely um, it's something that we've learned more since you've become an entrepreneur, I think, because there's a lot more of that is involved and is necessary for you to grow, you know? Yeah, because I'm like, we've talked about this before too. I'm not hiding behind any any business or anything. I can't really. I mean I work with Archangel Inc., but I'm I'm like as far as like working with clients, I work with them pretty much one on one. Um, you know, and I think that's it's great. It's hard at that times to really put yourself out there, but the more you do it, the more you get used to it. Now I don't know if I've ever asked any a, a coffee or a Starbucks barista for a free coffee. I think I asked something one day, but or I may have asked the one day, but it's just it's a cool example. Not that I've ever done it, but it's something. It's a good way to describe what we're saying. Yeah, it wasn't I think that was in a book we read that someone said? Oh yeah, the, like Starbucks or the coffee challenge. Go. It was wasn't for free coffee. Just asked for a discount, and you know, it's just a good way to practice asking and trying to get that opportunity for yourself. Because I think a lot of times we you know, blame the universe, blame our luck, blame all the bad things that happen to us. And we have to take responsibility and say, okay, like I got to start making my own, making my own opportunities, making my own chances um, and not using that as a cop out that, you know, "Ah, I'm just not lucky. Those things don't happen to me. Well, if they don't, you know, find a way to make it happen. You know, that's, that's the way to do it. Yeah. And I think those opportunities and, and doing those type of things just build our character overall and like Miranda was saying we've seen a lot of growth in our own characters in our own character each of our own characters <laughs> since I don't know how to say that but since we've been um, since I've been working from home and since we've really been pushing towards our goals and really trying to work on this stuff we've seen a lot of growth and I think that is just a natural um, you know part of just putting ourselves out there and not being afraid you know to ask these to ask those tough things yeah and even just talking about all the you know, different things we're doing now can be kind of nerve wracking. You know, if we're talking to someone that doesn't know, you know, we have a podcast or doesn't know that you write books and it's like, oh, like you should, you know, why don't you read my book? You know, and it's just, yeah. it's, and that it's the same thing. You're putting yourself out there and, you know, they might say, no, I don't think I want to read your book or, you know, no, I don't want to listen to your podcast, but it's just um, putting yourself out there. You know, it's, it's scary. Yeah, I think I think it always goes back to the we are we seek comfort. You know, I think as humans we just seek we seek comfort. As we were talking about, you know, you you're we're all risk averse. I think at heart, uh, I think we're definitely born that way, and I think we can work out of it and learn how to take risks. But 
it's that it's that comfort level where like oh you know I'd be more comfortable not talking about my book today like I don't really want to talk to the other people around me like I don't want to tell anyone about what I'm working on because I don't really want any rejection right now uh, and I don't think at times that's always bad to you know kind of keep it in I don't think we always have to be like hey read my book hey do this hey do that like mm-hmm. I don't think we need to always be you know doing this stuff but when the opportunity strikes i think we should be going for it and just and just putting ourselves out there Miranda. so we've said that over and over again but that has been something we've really been trying to push ourselves to as well yeah and that's you know with this this book especially we've been trying to really um tell people about it because a lot of people we know sometimes don't even know that you're an author or you know they don't know we have a podcast and it's just, you know, we're, because like we say all the time, we're more introverted. It's also like, oh, and I, I hate talking about myself as well. I just like, oh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to talk about me. And it's You've just. You've come a long way on this <laughs> podcast and you're just very, I think both, we both have, you're just very yeah. comfortable. Well, there's no, there's no sense of risk when you're, you know, sitting in an office watching the hummingbirds and it's that's just true. it's just the two of us <laughs> it's but everyone's going to be listening the to the joy this. of podcasts yes it works out very well for us so and yeah i'm just trying to think of what have we done to kind of overcome that that fear of failure cuz you never really get over that but it's still painful i think yes i think one really good tactic is the baby steps you know asking for a discount at a coffee shop like that's very low risk you know relatively low reward there that's why we use that example because it's if we can work it up in our minds into that being like a huge example but it's actually not like that's a very simple thing we can do to practice that and get a little, little bit more rejection in our lives and be a little bit more comfortable with failure in that way um but i mean you're asking for a discount on a two dollar coffee or like five dollars if you're at starbucks and getting the specialty but yeah. you're not asking for a lot. And I think even even talking about this, we're like, I'm not going to do that. Like, oh, but yeah. And it reminds me of um, the What Color Is Your Parachute book. In that, um, he said one of his pieces of advice to give to people who are on interviews was at the end of the interview, um, to have the interviewee look at the interviewer and say, um, you know, after like this interview, can you offer me this job? Like just flat out asking it, which sounds crazy. He's like, I would never yeah. ask that at the end of an interview. But he said it works. I don't know. I never had the guts to do it, obviously. But it's just, you know, it's just that asking. Like it's making it clear, like this is what I want. You know, this is, you know, be, this is like the blue fishing quote, you know, be impossible to misunderstand. And when you're saying something like, oh, can you offer me this job? Like, I, I really want this job. You're making it clear to them, that's what I want. And there's no guessing. You're also being very confident. You're saying, I think the interview went very well. Can you offer me this job after this? And you're kind of, in a way, you're putting them on the spot, which is kind of scary. Yeah. But at the <laughs> same time, you're being very clear. You're saying, like, I think this interview went great. I want the job. What do we need to do to make this happen? Yeah, so, I mean, somebody try that and let me know, because I'm very curious to see Yeah, if that works for you, (laughs) great. If you try and it doesn't, it was not our advice. (laughs) (laughs) It was, who wrote that book? I forget. Steve Sims, Blue Fishing? No, the... um, Oh, Parachute? parachute I don't know. I forget. We've read too many books this year. Uh, Yeah, so I think that's just another example, you know, just letting people know, like, hey, this is kind of my dream, this is what I want, this is what I'm working on. Just throwing it out there, you know, be, be brave, be outrageous, do the unexpected. Yeah, I think that's all great advice. And I think that sums it up perfectly, um, you know, in creating serendipity, um, which is a funny thing to say, creating serendipity, because serendipity is like not, not something you can create. But I like it. I like it because we really can make these opportunities uh, happen in our lives by planting seeds. And I think... I think, you know, we're really excited for you as you're listening to this episode and as you're thinking about different things that you can do in your life to really just push yourself forward uh, and then to just plant those little seeds that will eventually grow into something great. Uh, I think it's just amazing. I think there's a lot of potential out there. There's, you have a lot of potential in your life um, just to really see some really cool changes. Yeah, so go out and, you know, do something crazy today. Yeah, <laughs> just do something crazy. 
<laughs> All right, guys. If you want more information about my book, you can go to jmring.com slash volcanic dash momentum. Again, that's jmring.com slash volcanic dash momentum. Depending on when you go to that link, it's going to send you to different places. It's just going to be able to give you a copy uh, of my book. You can pick it up in on Amazon if it's after the launch date or if you're before the launch date of October 19th, 2018. And listening to this, you're going to be able to get a free advanced review copy of Ooh, my book. And who Pretty exciting. Who doesn't want a free book, honestly? Yeah, I know. So I would, yeah, I would snatch that up as soon as you can. Yep. <laughs> so thank you for listening, everyone. I hope you found this very insightful and stay toasty. Stay toasty, friends.